So I'm at CTPE Engineering in Mildon Hall. I'm going to talk to Chris Taylor in a minute, who's the owner of the business. But before we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about the journey they've been on with Haas, starting on the turn-in side. You can see here, this is an SL10 turn-in centre. This was one of their first machines. And, and then here behind us, we have an ST10, which was then their next investment on a turn-in side. But more interestingly than that, they've really gone up in capability with their latest purchase, which is their ST10 Y-axis. So let's go and see with, speak to Chris about why they bought it. So Chris, this ST10Y, latest addition to your turn-in, why did you go for a machine with such capability? Um, well, for start, we wanted a machine that uh, would try and take out some of the milling operations that we were having to do as a, a separate operation. The, the Y-axis gives you the capabilities of producing slots and, and irregular shapes off centre line, uh, which obviously you can't do with just a, a non-Y-axis machine. I was going to say that, I was going to say mill drill is one thing which this machine has got, yeah. Y-axis is the next leap. Yeah. Was, was that a big decision for you or was it well, quite easy? <clears throat> Um, well, I think it was quite easy because I think when we looked at uh, what was available and what we wanted to do, making the investment uh, with a Y-axis machine gave us, we knew that basically any job that come along uh, in the future that we, we, we weren't currently doing, that we were going to have the capabilities of, of uh, being able to cope with. Okay, tell me about the real-time benefits of that though. Are, is there a... Is there a scenario where you've got a part and it used to take you 10 minutes and now it takes you three? This component that we're running on here at the moment, um, uh, it had a first stop turn uh, operation and then it would have to go milling to have all the holes drilled uh, in it um, So, and, and the square put on. So um, basically we've taken that, that operation completely out and that's completed on just the one machine. We must have reduced the cycle times by at least 30% by, by doing it all on this machine. So not quite 70 like I suggested, but no. not far off? No. <laughs> now, what about milling? People do ask questions about milling on a lathe. How do you find the milling on this machine? Is it as good as taking a part off and putting it on your mini mill? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, it's not a milling machine. It is a, a lathe um, with, with mill capacity. Uh, but we've done some fairly complex parts on here uh, to quite fine limits, uh, surface finishes, and you know, quality has been excellent. And uh, as long as you, you know, um, are realistic about cycle times you know you can achieve some really good quality parts and then the control for you that that's a big thing isn't it here yeah i think that's one of the main reasons that you'll see so many hash machines you know here uh, you know in our workshop is because um i was the, the hash controller we, we had the, our very first one in 2001 um and i think it's very difficult to come away from something that you know is that user friendly and that good so you say about the first machine that that was a lathe wasn't it you had it was, so you yeah. started your journey with, with an SL10 yeah an SL10 we had in 2001 and you progress through now to going from two axis right the way up to this multi-function yeah. four axis lathe yeah that's correct yeah and some of the parts you're making we've spoken about the material are you doing aluminium steels plastics um, yeah, high performance plastics, aluminium, sort of non-ferrous sort of materials. We do do some stainless steels and titanium we've uh, machined on here. Um, but general steels, we're, we're, it's not the forte for our t industry, uh, you know, as we work in the sort of medical field and scientific, general tool, uh, carbon steels are not, not something that we get involved in. And the other two machines behind here, the older ones, they seem to be Y-axis and mill drill too? I'm, I'm not sure whether we're going to go for another Y-axis, but we definitely need a sub-spindle machine. That's, that's the next stage for us, uh, because uh, there are a lot of jobs where we're obviously having to perform second op operation uh, turning uh, ops, whereas if we had a sub-spindle, obviously we could cut that out. So that's probably where our next step is going to be.